All right, guys, welcome back to part three. I know three videos, three days. What? I like never daily upload, but yeah, I'm trying my best to upload as frequent, frequently as I can uh, at the moment because I have some time and I feel like why not? Um, and so for today's episode, we are going to be talking about properties uh, and how we can actually start changing things in our game. So this is where things get like, I mean, things are already fun, I hope, but things get really fun here. So buckle up. This is going to be an awesome episode. And uh, before that, let's just have a quick question. I'm going to start doing this at the beginning of my videos. Quick question for you guys to answer down in the comments. What is your favorite Roblox game at the moment? So let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear your thoughts. All right, now let's go ahead and get started. So if you guys don't know how to insert parts into Roblox Studio, uh, you can go ahead and click the Home tab up here and then click the Part button right here. And as you're going to see, you're going to have this part inserted into Roblox. Uh, I'm also going to change the color because this is probably more like what you're looking at. Okay, that's probably what you are looking at right now. So we're going to go through properties right now. And um, let's just go ahead and start so I think I mentioned this already uh, you always want to have Explorer and properties open as well as output so make sure you're in view and make sure your properties are open and they should be somewhere around here maybe not exactly there uh, but something like that I'm actually gonna bring my screen over a little bit there we go now you guys can see the properties a little bit better so look down here and you're gonna see it you can scroll through all these properties and uh, yeah this is what we're gonna be talking about today how to change these both manually and through script so, first, we're not going to go through all of them, but first is brick color. Now, brick color, if you click on that, it'll have a selection of different colors. Uh, I'm going to click a blue, and uh, yeah, that's how we can select a color for this. You will also notice if you click the move button right here, and you drag up the part, you're going to see this shadow right here. And if you click cast shadow, you're going to see it turns it on and off. This is a boolean. Keep that in mind. This is true or false. Checked means true, false me or uh, unchecked is false. So keep that in mind because that's you may have an idea on how we're going to be able to change that in our script. Uh, we're going to skip through material. You guys can check that out if you want. Transparency is how visible it is. I, I like to think about it like that. So if you click transparency, you'll see a slider. Basically, it's uh, zero to one. Zero is fully, you can fully see it. One is see-through. So if you have something in the middle, you can see it slightly see-through. I'm going to put it back to zero. Next, uh, let's go ahead and skip through all this. There's name again, so you can do that. Parent is, uh, so let me quickly address this. When I first started scripting, I was so, so confused about what parent meant. And parent is just whatever something is inside of. So this part right here, you can see it's parent is the workspace because it is inside of the workspace. If we open and close this workspace by pressing this arrow, you can see, well, we're inside of the workspace. If I had put this part inside of this base plate, which by the way, this is the base plate, this whole thing, its parent is now the base plate. So I'm going to drag it back into the workspace, and that is how you uh, know what the parent is. Next, size and C frame. So these are three dimensional, right? Roblox is three dimensional, so you have your X, Y, and Z coordinates. I'm not going to get too technical here, um, but as you can see in the properties uh, right here, ch take a look at the size while I click the scale tool and I move it, or I scale it up. As you can see, the um, the size is starting to scale up. You can see this number right here is starting to move, okay? And we can do it along the X and the Y, okay? And that's the same with position. When you move it, it's gonna have a different position, which is right here, okay? Um, and you can see it's an X, Y, Z coordinate also. Uh, we're gonna get more into detail on that in a future episode, because we're gonna have a whole episode about positions and, C uh, yeah, positions of vector three. Because that's how you like resize things and move things with a script. Okay, uh, let's do three more uh, or two more properties, um, and that is can collide and anchored. First, I'm going to do anchored. So you scroll down down here where it says part, and you'll see this button called anchored. This is also a boolean. Remember, true is checked, untrue or false is unchecked. Um, if I go ahead and move this up, and I Go ahead and make sure that can, uh, anchored is unchecked. And we drop down this, uh, you can, where you have this play button, you can also click the arrow to do different things like run. Run is just like play the game that your character's not actually there. So we're gonna run it real quick and watch. Oh, there we go, the part drops, okay? And now you may have a guess what happens if we click anchored. Anchored is now true, we're gonna run it. And it's basically just gonna be stuck in the sky. That was 
I kind of spoiled it there for you guys. I don't know why Roblox s sometimes just crashes. But yeah, Angered makes things stay. As you can see, it is no longer falling. So if you want something that people like can't push over, you're going to want to make sure that's anchored. Now, we're going to do one more thing. I'm going to leave it anchored. By the way, you can click this anchored button up here as a quick shortcut to anchor something. I'm going to click the scale. If you guys don't know about these, there are these four buttons. There's this just select where you can just grab something and drag it. There's a move where you can move it specifically on different axes. And then there's a scale where you can scale it along the different axes. So I'm going to scale it like that. And then there's the rotate. Obviously, you can rotate things. You can click Control Z to undo. Okay, so last thing is can collide. So currently, you can see that can collide is true. I'm going to go ahead and play this, and I'm going to show you what can collide does. Can collide, as you can see, I'm going to walk up to the door, and oh, look at that. I'm stuck, <laughs> right? That's can collide. Um, if can collide is false, right, it's off, unchecked, false, then we will be able, and anything in the game will be able to go right through it. Okay, so there we go. Now let's go ahead and start scripting this. So first we're gonna name this part, make sure to give it a name. We're gonna call this um, properties part uh, so that we know what we're dealing with. I'm gonna scoop my screen over a little bit now so that it's kind of a good view of the whole studio. And let's insert another script into server script service. Let's rename this property script and we are going to get started. So the only pro we're not going to do, uh, we may do brick color. I, may co I might come back to that, um, how to change the color in uh, script. So but first, before we go to properties, I want to throw in a little quick lesson about weight. Uh, if you type weight and then an open and close parentheses and any number in here, it'll just wait that number of seconds. Uh, it's super simple. If you do weight one like that, and I'm going to zoom in a little again so that you guys can see that. Uh, if you just do weight one, it'll just wait one second before doing anything that's below it. So if I had print... Hey there. <laughs> it'll wait one second for this to be finished. It'll wait one second and then it'll print hey there. So that's just a quick lesson on wait. We're going to use that. Um, but first, uh, yeah, let's actually start by saying wait 10 and then let's change the anchored first. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click this and I'm going to make sure that can collide is checked. Make sure it's true. Okay. Otherwise it's going to go straight through the ba base plate. Let's scale this up. Okay. And let's move it like that and move it into the sky. Okay, so now it's up in the sky, uh, and make sure that it starts out as anchored, so anchored is true. Now, how do we actually whoops, get that part? Well, we can actually use a variable. So up above the weight, uh, let's use our knowledge from last time, we can store items inside those variable boxes. So we can say local part, so that's our variable name, that's the name of our box. And we can say equals game, so game is just everything in our game, right? It's everything in this explorer. And then we can say dot workspace. Dot basically means, okay, we're going to look inside of our last thing. So game, we're looking inside of the game to find the workspace, which is right here. So we, we say game dot workspace, and then you may have a guess, dot properties part. Okay, so you're going to want to make sure that it's spelled the same way, capitalization, so and spelling is super, super important. So make sure you do that. But we're saying this new variable called part is equal to the game dot workspace right here, this workspace dot properties part. OK, now uh, it takes a little bit of time to load in. So what I'm actually going to do, I'm going to put that down below the weight so that it waits 10 and then it creates the variable. Uh, that way we don't have to deal with any errors because it hasn't loaded in yet. And you may be wondering, hey, I thought you said variable should be up at the top. Yes, it should, but uh, it should be at the top of whenever we're using it. So since we don't use the name part above it, we're totally fine. Hope that makes sense. So now that we have that variable, we know we have our part stored in a variable, we can simply say part dot anchored. Again, capitalization is everything equals to false. So you remember how I said dot is looking inside of it. It is, um, but it's also looking inside of its properties. So if it doesn't find an item or if um, if there's a prop. OK, so we can say workspace dot properties part to find something inside of it. Or we can say properties part dot anchored or any of its properties to change them. OK, so just remember, um, you can use dots to either look inside of the last thing or you can use a dot to look for the properties. It just just remember uh, you're going to be looking for a property if it's a property like anchored or can collide, something like that. I hope that makes sense. Um, so we're going to go ahead. We're going to close this out. We should now if we run this game. We should see this part 
fall in about 10 seconds. So let's give it a few seconds and any second now. <laughs> There we go. As you can see, it has fallen down. So that is how that works. Next, let's create another part. Okay. Uh, actually, no, we're fine. This is this is totally fine. And uh, on, inside of our property script, let's keep going. Let's write another wait. So we're going to wait three more seconds. So wait three. And then we're going to change another property. And we're going to say part dot anchored equals to true. So we're going to make it anchored again. It's going to stay in place. Um, but we're also going to say part dot can collide equals to false. Remember, if can collide is false, that means that things can go right through it. So I'm going to scale this way up and we're actually going to hit play this time. Sorry about that. We're going to actually hit play this time. And let's go ahead and wait for this to fall after 10 seconds. Any second now, it should fall, boom, and then it's going to wait three seconds. We still can't go through it, but after three seconds, can collide is false and we can now walk straight through the part. So we have just changed a couple properties, but now let's change transparency. That's remember how that, that's how visible it is. So we can say, wait five more seconds. And we're going to say part, uh, oops, sorry. Remember capitalization is everything. I didn't have a capital P. So part dot transparency and transparency is a number between zero and one. It could be 0.5, which is like one half. So it's half transparent, but let's just set it to one. So it goes fully inv invisible. Let's wait three more seconds and we'll say part.transparency equals to zero. So we're going to make it fully see-through. We're going to wait three more seconds and we are going to make it visible again. Let's go ahead and close out of the script. And before you play a game, make sure you always close out of your script because um, there's this thing called drafts, which we're not going to talk about today, but just make sure you close out your scripts before you play it. Okay. All right. So it drops. We can go through it now. Let's wait a few seconds and it should go invisible. Yep, look at that, it's invisible. And now it's visible again. So perfect, That are those are most of the properties. Let's go ahead and talk about brick, uh, brick color real quick. Um, this is gonna be a little bit confusing, so buckle up for this. Uh, so let's go and wait another three seconds after we make it visible. I'm gonna zoom out a little bit. And what we're going to say, we're going to say part, again, dot brick color, like the other times we say dot and then the property name. But this time we have to say equals or is brick color dot new parentheses quotation marks and then your color. You can see all the different possible colors. Let's just go ahead and say fire yellow. So that's why I wasn't sure if we were going to go through it because brick color is a little bit confusing. Um, but basically what it's, that's how you change the brick color of something. You say part or your, the part you're changing dot brick color. Okay. It's current color. We're going to set it to a brand new brick color. And the way we do that is by saying brick color dot new open and close parentheses and quotation marks. Okay. That's the important part. Remember you have that and your quotation quotation marks member to remember that to have that. Okay. Very important to have all these and then name of the color in here. Okay, I'm gonna get rid of that. Don't have that there. That was just making sure that you remember quotation marks, parentheses. Okay, so, and then remember you can get rid of this uh, and you can get rid of all of it and add new quotation marks to see all the different names um, for, you can scroll through all these and find a color that you wanna try out. Now let's just do, let's do pink. And then there's one more thing with brick color. If you wait three seconds, you can actually set it to a random brick color. And the way you do that is by saying part dot brick color equals brick color dot random open close parentheses. That's it. So you can either change it to a specific color by using brick color dot new parentheses quotation marks and your color, or you can use brick color dot random with two parentheses. If this doesn't make sense, that's totally fine. Uh, it doesn't really matter too much. You're gonna get some practice. So just, yeah, make sure you practice this. Um, keep exploring with different properties, but let's go ahead and play it one more time uh, so we can see all the different properties we've changed in one script. Um, so let's see, we can uh, let it fall. And also, uh, actually, we're not going to talk about that. I was going to mention something. We can go through it. I was going to mention something about scripts, but we'll get to that in a future episode. So now let's just see what we've done. We can make it invisible, and we can make it visible again, and we can change the color to a pink, 
and then we can change the color to a random color. All right, so that is properties. Uh, there are obviously more properties that we haven't gone into yet, but we will be continuing. Remember, this is where things start to get really cool for scripting because you can start changing things inside of your game. So make sure you stay tuned for episode four. That'll be coming out very soon. I don't know if it'll be coming out tomorrow. I don't know when, um, but make sure you're subscribed for that. Uh, if it is out, it'll be up on the screen now. Otherwise, it'll be some other video. Again, if you have any questions, leave a comment down below or join my Discord server. Either way works, um, and I will try to respond to you as quick as I can. All right. Thank you guys for watching, and I will see you in part four.